Hi, Bob Greenier here, volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project, and today we are having a look at side B of plate 3 uh, of the 3 times run Omaza vibrator plates. And we've seen some quite nice things. Uh, I don't want to run over the sort of normal things that you've seen, but uh, as usual, the images will be available to download uh, in the description of the video. And first up is this rather wonderful looking braided structure here. Uh, which comes in at 2.437 millimeters. And if we look at the other metrics on that, uh, the uh, beautiful repetition going on here, and uh, the segment lengths are 147 or so micrometers, and the width is around about 55, 57 micrometers. And it's a really nice, it looks like a triple braid uh, system going on here. Now if we, I, I composited through a wide array of um, uh, the, the three files uh, to give us a nice long track and if I zoom into this and you can uh, do the same when you get it uh, you can see it really does look like a braided uh, uh, repeating structure here and as we go along it la da 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 at the end here, there's a little bit of a gap, and there's a, like a, one of these three-point circles, a little bit offset, almost one period out, and it kind of looks like that may have been where it came to a resting point. Um, so you can really see it's like uh, three, I think it's three uh, structures in there, um, which kind of fits with what you're seeing at the end there. Anyway, it's really rather lovely. Uh, so that was uh, first up. Uh, next up, uh, we have, uh, oh, this is just a random blob. Uh, I don't think this is particularly interesting. You can't really see it. Uh, uh, it may be some detritus, uh, so we'll leave that one for now. Um, there was uh, another kind of very large macro structure here. If we go to the scale on this, um, this is uh, radius 374 micrometers. Uh, so it's one of these massive sort of things that may have like died and dissipated out. Uh, I don't know. And uh, so we'll come off that. But very interestingly, we found another little kind of like planetary system here. Uh, beautiful circle around it and then a circle in the middle and then little ears. So I'm calling this monkey. And uh, we zoom into this here. And uh, again, you can see th these kind of crystallites which are in this area, which you see on the much bigger one, uh, which uh, is kind of like not got any superstructure on the inside. But this one has another ring on the inside and then uh, di directly opposite each other, you have a ring here. And it might be that this is actually a ring that's pointing this direction and there's another one going the other way, I don't know. But at least there's, there's two uh, equal size either side uh, with a bigger ring around the outside. and. Uh, here's some measurements on this. So I'm call like I say, I'm calling this the monkey. Um, and the uh, outer ring is uh, radius 225 microns. So it's actually half a millimeter diameter. Uh, the, uh, what I call the face is 71 radius. So that's 130, uh, whatever it is. Uh, I'll do my math. So <laughs> uh, 140 two uh, micrometers diameter and we've got 62 uh, on the ear uh, diameter for that part and um, it's really rather lovely now I've actually got this live on the microscope so uh, you can see if I, I move it around now it's going to actually move the uh, measurement points off you can see me moving it around with my hand uh, do I lose it? Do I lose it? Oh, I've lost it now. Ah, no. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere here. That, where has it gone? Where has it gone? Oh, no. Don't do this at home, kids. There we go. Hey, It's coming back into view. Okay, so what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to uh, get this back lined up. And I'm going to leave this. Um, it's slightly offset, but I can fix that in a sec. Um, I'm going to leave this uh, over the weekend and I'm going to see if this changes because I was wondering whether the crystallites that we saw earlier uh, are actually changing over time and falling apart. So I want to see if 
after the weekend, whether we still have this defined structure on on this particular uh, thing. I, what I might even do, I think I can I can set this up to do a like a, a, a grab every sort of hour or something. I don't know. I, I'll see. Um, anyway, um, another point with these crystals. Um, uh, uh, a guy called Felix uh, Schockelmann did a sort of uh, sort of a wonderful sort of ready for a paper look at this where you've got the armor uh, things here and then down here he's uh, sort of false colored them and defined the crystals and, and the boundary areas uh, between the two that I observed on plate two and uh, the one that was in Matsumoto's 1993 January paper in fusion technology and uh, this is really interesting and this inspired um, uh, uh, a chap uh, on the forum uh, called uh, uh, Artifact and he pointed to some things that are on um, uh, the idea of water crystals and these hypothetical things. So this is one of the papers and uh, uh, you can see that these don't look too dissimilar. Um, and you can see that in this case we've got a, a pentagon here. Now these things are actually uh, like water clusters here and it's saying that uh, you know, they are, uh, so little is understand about water clusters in bulk water that is considered one of the unsolved pro uh, problems in chemistry. Now, there is a, another water cluster here. This one, this is at 17 Kelvin and it's only one nanometers. Well, we're seeing things um, that are 450 mi <laughs> micrometers across. Um, these things are big. Um, and they are at room temperature. And the other thing that we saw yesterday on the other side of, uh, of plate three uh, was uh, these, uh, where is it, down here, this uh, crystal, uh, crystallization. So you've got the ring, and then you can see the pentagon that you saw in that water crystal, and there's other geometry here, and you can see the lobes around here. And it's kind of like the crystals are coming out, and this was actually observed something similar by Matsumoto in, uh, uh, again in 1993. Uh, and you can see it here, and it's the same kind of uh, uh, crystallization uh, coming out with these linear lines and these uh, uh, 90 degree spurs. And he calls it scattered itonic hydrogen atoms frost. So effectively, crystals of hydrogen, uh, which is absolutely fascinating, but we have this beautiful one here. So I want to see, I mean, if I can catch another one of the, the structures like these structures, it would be great on one of the other plates to see over time if it ended up uh, sort of uh, emitting some hydrogen uh, in these sort of crystal forms. But uh, uh, I think this is really, really fascinating what's going on here, um, that we're getting these structures. Now, if they are actually forms of water crystal, uh, like we see here, um, then we're talking about a phenomenal number of um, phenomenal number of actual uh, H2O molecules somehow arranged in there. Now, on a, I think it was a 2012 video on NHK, uh, there was a scientist, just a short clip in there, and it was showing these um, uh, analysis of the Amasa water by liquid ionization mass spectrometry. Now, I guess it's it's ionizing it, so maybe it'll be breaking up clusters into smaller clusters. Um, but when you look at this, I, I did a basic analysis in M mass, and uh, you, you, if you just put multiple sort of uh, uh, H2Os in there, like H10O5, you end up with being very close to all bar a little bit of calibration error. Uh, the same as these these lines here. So it really does look like uh, the Amasa system is creating water crystals. And if these ones that we have down here uh, are actually these water crystals, and uh, then after a period of time they do sort of freeze out into this uh, itonic hydrogen, as, as, as um, uh, Takaki Matsumoto said, then this really is extremely, extremely fascinating. Is this ultra-dense hydrogen uh, trapped in these crystals, uh, it, it, what is causing these anomalous effects on metals and uh, the, um, the storage of energy and, and so forth? And the fact that it's a gas is also very, very interesting. So um, 
There's lots of things I'm throwing out there, but uh, thank you for your time. Uh, do look into uh, water crystals and how this might be fitting in uh, to what we're seeing. And hopefully uh, we can see maybe if this changes o over the weekend. It might be that you have to look at the plates very, very quickly after they come out of the device in order to capture the crystals that we caught the other day. And that, that may have been a reason why these things may not have been observed in the past. But uh, this is a real joy to do this characterization. And uh, thank you again to uh, Mr. Amaza for um, sharing these plates, which we've now agreed we can keep as long as uh, we need to to do any studies on them. Thank you for your time.